welcome to the evening services of the Northfield Church of Christ for Sunday, November the 29th. I hope you will engage yourself with us as we sing songs of praise to our Lord. We have a couple of prayers and I deliver a message that I hope will be beneficial to each of us. So uh, let's get ourselves started with our song service, singing from Songs of Faith and Praise, if you would turn your books to number 709, 709. <clears throat> How sweet, how heavenly is the sight when those that love the Lord in one another's peace delight and so fulfill the word. When each can feel his brother's sigh and with him bear a part. When sorrow flows from eye to eye and joy from heart to heart. When free from envy, scorn, and pride our wishes all abound, each can his brother's failing side and show a brother's love. When love in one delightful stream through every bosom flows, when union sweet and dear esteem in every action glows, Love is the golden chain that binds the happy souls above, and he's an heir of heaven who finds his bosom glow with love. Turn, please, to number 296. Two ninety six. We have come into his house and gathered in his name to worship him. We have come into his house and gathered in his name to worship him. We have come into his house and gathered in his name to worship Christ the Lord. Worship him, Christ the Lord. Let's forget about ourselves and magnify his name and worship him. Let's forget about ourselves and magnify his name and worship him. Let's forget about ourselves and magnify his name and worship Christ the Lord. Worship him, Christ the Lord. Before our opening prayer, let's sing number 791. Seven ninety one. On bended knee I come, with a humble heart I come, bowing down before your holy throne, lifting holy hands. 
news to you as I pledge my love anew. I worship you in spirit. I worship you in truth. Make my life a holy praise unto you. On bended knee I come with a broken heart. I come bowing down before your holy throne. As I look upon your face, show your mercy and your grace. Change my life, O Holy Spirit. Make me fresh and ever new. Make my life a holy sacrifice to you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our God and Heavenly Father, we have so many things to be thankful for, and as we have passed this season that uh, we know of in this country is Thanksgiving. Help us to understand the, the principles of what Thanksgiving is all about. Help us to understand that Thanksgiving is a 365-day-a-year attitude that each of us ought to have. Help us that in each one of our prayers to you, that thanksgiving is included. And I just pray, dear Heavenly Father, that we'll be ever grateful and have the gratitude that we need to have for your being our God and sending your Son to us. We have so many on our prayer list, dear Heavenly Father. Sometimes they're too numerous to mention. Uh, help us all to go to our bulletins and, and see those names and, and put those people on our hearts. Uh, help us... Uh, uh, personally, to remember our friend Pat. Uh, help us, dear Heavenly Father, to remember my neighbor Juan's father who uh, has lung cancer at this time. And I just pray that you just uh, continue to uh, have your loving hand uh, upon them and help us to be uh, people of comfort and people of support. Be with us through the rest of this service and through the rest of the evening. I pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. And our last song will be number 704. 704. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together with love. There is only one God, there is only one King, there is only one body, that is why we can sing. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together with love. Oh, that was wonderful. I hope you enjoyed the song service and I hope we praise the Lord uh, in a way that uh, he will know that. We love him so very much. Uh, this evening, I would like to share with you, uh, as we have uh, been in this uh, series of lessons uh, that has revolved around a book by Mark and Deborah Laser called Seven Desires of Every Heart. And we're going to get to another one of those desires this evening. That particular desire is one that's called a sense of belonging. Each of us has a desire to have a sense of belonging. Now, 
Mark and Deborah Laser aren't the only ones that feel this way. Uh, many, many psychologists list this desire as one of human beings, humankind's most basic needs. And because it is such a strong desire, everyone, everyone will literally find a group to which uh, they want to belong. The challenge for us is to find a group or several groups which benefit us rather than belonging to a group that is either uh, detrimental to our physical, spiritual, or emotional well-being. The, the feeling uh, for the need to belong comes very, very, very early. Young people get that desire. I think that our schools do a wonderful job with it. I think schools provide good groups for our children to be in. Uh, sports teams, debate clubs, yearbook staffs, school plays, the band, just to mention a few. And these are positive groups where people, uh, our young people, can feel a sense of belonging. But it's, it's just not teenagers that need this sense or a search for a group. Adults also uh, seek that sense, that sense of belonging. I heard a story not too long ago that I'd like to share it with you. Uh, a young lady grew up in a Christian home with a father who was a, a minister. Somehow or another, she just went down the wrong path. Now, she eventually came back, and she was so moved by this experience that she wrote a book, and the book was called Aching to Belong. And because she speaks so well on the subject, uh, I'm going to quote an excerpt uh, from this uh, book and uh, from uh, that article, and then close it out with some biblical concepts about belonging. Now, this is a quote from this young lady, so I am going to read it. For much of my life, I have felt inadequate and isolated. I have searched for belonging down uncertain paths into unhealthy relationships. If we will be honest with ourselves, nearly all of us feel inadequate to some degree and oftentimes feel isolated, even in a crowd. In places or relationships that matter to us, belonging is critical. Feeling like an outsider in your own church or in any community or relationship that you cherish isn't just ironic, it's devastating. We look to those places for connection, for meaning, and for identity. And so, it is in my view, an atmosphere of belonging is essential within the family of God. And you know where I'm going. You know the group to which uh, I think is so important for us to belong. If we intend to have an impact on this world, if we intend to reach the lost and to reach the dying, we must be an inclusive community of believers. And that inclusivity means that each of us has a sense of belonging. We were once on the outside looking in, but we have taken the attitude of denouncing the sin, but embracing the sinner. We have to, I think, recognize a sense of belonging and understand that is, it is vital to the help of God's church. Belonging encourages growth. It ensures sustainability. When a, a spirit of belonging is cultivated, faith is nourished, beliefs are solidified, and hope is restored and renewed. Engagement, and that's engagement is, is true belonging, helps to, helps to root us. Uh, it, it helps to give our lives more meaning and more purpose. And so with a sense of belonging 
comes commitment to an engagement in the causes of the church. When we have this sense of belonging, we're eager to invest our time, our talents, and our money, knowing that this sense of belonging is vital to our well-being. Now let's go to the next step of this lesson and take a look at God's view of belonging. If I might, and I, I know that we, we tend to uh, group things, we're, we're that way, we're grouping people, I might submit to you that there are, uh, there can be several groups uh, within a dynamic. And I think the world is divided into two groups, those who have a sense of belonging and those who do not. And, and there can be any number of groups that satisfy some of our needs. There are local, local clubs and organizations in our community. If we had children in school, perhaps we'd join the Parent Teachers Association. Uh, those were groups that, that teachers and, and parents got together and discussed their children's needs. But you know what? They don't even compare, I don't believe, to God's own family to the degree that God and his family can benefit an individual. God has always offered that option to us. He's offered that option of coming to him and belonging to him and being his people. That's what he did with the children of Israel. He offered them that option, and he actually went as far as to call them his chosen people. But the greatest offer that God made to us was the offering of his son. And he sent his son to die so that each of us could belong to a family, that family being his church. Interestingly enough, Jesus literally begged. He literally begged for people to belong to him. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 to 30, he said, Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Boy, if that's not an invitation to belonging, I'm not sure what is. He gives us all the wonderful things that there are about belonging to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And since he is the head of the church, then it is good for us to belong to the institution to which he is the cornerstone, to which he is the head. He wants all of us to come into his family. Through the pen of the Apostle Peter, in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, he wrote, The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wanting any to perish. That is God's invitation for us to belong. He wants none to perish. He wants all to come to the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And with coming to that knowledge, we will understand that we need to belong to his family. It's so very important for us. In John chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, he says to us that we need to continue on and to keep practicing his ways. But we can't belong to God if we continue to keep practicing the ways of the world and practicing 
the, the tenets and beliefs that are contrary to God's nature. Every school year, uh, when I started my classes, and I did this for many, many years as a school teacher, the first day I laid down the general rules of the classroom. And I let my students know that you must adhere to these rules if the classroom will be a place where learning is to occur. Because that's what you're here for. Our school is a stepping stone for you onto bigger and better things. Maybe it's a stepping stone uh, for you uh, to go into a particular job or vocation. Maybe it's a stepping stone for you to further your education and go to another school. But you must work within the parameters, within the rules of the classroom. The children of Israel were lost until God provided the old law for them. And now they had uh, religious beliefs. They had something they had something that they could believe in and adhere to and be a part of. God's nature is that to want us to belong. And belonging to God's family means, according to John, uh, 1 John chapter 1, verse 7, is that we walk in the light. Okay, we are to walk in the light. And what he says in 1 John chapter 1, verse 7, is he says that his laws are not burdensome. Okay, his laws are not burdensome. And he wants all to belong to that part of his family. In 1 John chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, John writes, My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he himself is the propitiation for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for for those of the whole world. And so when we come together in Christ's body, the church, we have a group of like-minded people. We have a group of people, and if I, if I overuse this term, that all want to belong to something. Every person has a need to belong and will belong to something. We need to make sure that that something is something that is worthwhile and understand that the absolute best thing that we can belong to is we can belong to God's church because Jesus gave his life for that church. And if we truly belong, then we will be devoted to God's family. It will be manifested by our time, our talents, and our money, and we will give freely of all of those things. We must also manifest that we are accepting to all others because those others have chosen to look for a group to which they belong. On Sunday mornings, when I give the invitation at the end of the lesson, it is not only to come to the Lord, it is not only to confess one's sins, but I also give the invitation for any who want to identify with our church there at Northfield, to identify with that group. And in essence, what I'm saying is, tell us that you want to belong to this group because you have seen the positive traits of this group. And belonging to this group will make you a better person. May all of us help to make our churches a group, 
if I'm speaking to those outside of the Northfield Church of Christ group, uh, to, that our churches will be a group that people will want to be a part of. And speaking personally to those of you at the Northfield Church of Christ, I hope that you devote your, your energy and your talents and your money to make the church as good and positive of a place to belong to that there can ever be. I hope that you can take these thoughts with you. Uh, rest on them this evening. Give some thought to them. Give some thought to Jesus saying to us that he wants us as weary and heavy laden to take his yoke upon us because his burden is light. Help us to understand that God doesn't want any of us to perish but come to him. I pray that these words will have an impact on you and have a positive effect on you. Let's all pray together. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're, we're so grateful for uh, you being a part of our lives. And we're so grateful that Jesus gave up his life and that uh, he knew and you knew all the time that there would be a church there would be uh, this wonderful kingdom here on earth for us to belong to and to share that belonging to others who also want to belong. Bless us, dear Heavenly Father. Help us to make our churches the best that they can possibly be because we love you and we love those that are sharing our walk with one another. Bless us in these very, very trying times. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, to be, stay physically safe. And help us, dear Heavenly Father, as we not only stay physically safe, but within your church to be emotionally safe. Help us to, be, uh, to have this sense of spiritual well-being. I pray this prayer in the name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. May God bless all of you. Oh.